Hi, I'm Benjamin T from the National University of Singapore. I'm at the Material Science and Engineering Department and I'm very excited today to share with you our research on developing sensor technologies for an AI era. So let me give you a quick introduction of my background. I did my PhD at Stanford University and was also a Stanford Biodesign Innovation Fellow. Thereafter, I have experienced working in large multinational corporations such as Amazon, as well as uh, started my own startup companies and raised millions of dollars and, and brought products to FDA approval. And right now I'm very interested to translate a lot of the innovations coming out from my research lab into the real world for human impact. My group is called the Sensors.AI Labs and we are developing technologies that cut across material science, electronics and robotics. In particular, I'm very interested in creating versions of electronic skins that can help develop much smarter and better AI algorithms for robots to help humans in various applications. Why do I care about skins? Well, first of all, if you lose your sense of touch, which is what happened to this poor gentleman here, he is unable to get off his chair, which is something that we all do every day on a daily basis, even though his muscles are working perfectly. And that's because his brain and muscles doesn't get the necessary feedback from the skin that every one of us have to allow him to balance and apply the right amount of pressure on his feet to stand upright. So as you can see, skin is a very important sense organ that all of us have. And this has great implications for robotics, which is getting in today's uh, advances, getting much, much more nimble, agile, and they're even able to do backflips. Of course, this is have uh, required many times of trials to be successful. And in fact, if you look at some of these really advanced robots right now that almost look and behave like humans, without skin, they have can encounter accidents, for example. If a robot hit the, his feet onto a lamp and is unable to realize that and, and falls. That's why robots need skin like all humans do. And the reason skin is very important is because it provides us a blind spot free sensory information as compared to vision, which, has, which can be obscured. So learning from the human skin, we can develop technologies that can enable robots to be smarter and make electronic skins that are actually suitable for use in robotics as well as healthcare applications, which I'll share about later. So our skin is really a very complex organ. There are many different kinds of cells, very specialized cells that send information about the contact you have with the, your real world, the physical world, and transmit the information to your muscles and your brain for processing. And so by learning from neuroscientists as well as biologists, we are starting to develop materials they behave very much like skin. At the same time, we are also mimicking the human nervous system to be able to transfer and transmit all this information very quickly to artificial algorithms for processing. And in our group, we, we deal a lot with some of the newer materials like soft materials. And one big challenge that we are solving is the viscoelastic property of soft materials. Soft materials have this memory effect. When you apply force on them, they kind of slowly relax back. And this actually makes it not ideal for use as a touch sensor or pressure sensor on skins. So by developing a hybrid approach that allows soft materials to be used, we are able to make composite materials that have dramatically reduced viscoelastic properties as compared to typical soft materials. This can be seen in the window here. And in fact, our work is actually some of the best sens sensitivity for sensors, but as well as the best in terms of the amount of hysteresis it has. And this was recently published in a very prestigious journal, the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences in the US. So other examples of skin that we are mimicking are what we call self-healing properties. When you cut yourself, your skin can self-repair. And here we are developing materials that can behave like skin and heal themselves, all done at ambient conditions without the need for different kinds of healing agents. As I mentioned, another area of research that we are interested in is to learn how skin can transmit a vast amount of data. We all have millions of sensors working all the time to transmit information to our brain for processing. And the skin is no exception. From the thousand sensors roughly to on your fingertip to over a million all over your body, this information is transmitted all the time in real time to the brain for processing. And what's unique about the human system is that we, the speed of transmission is largely invariant with the number of sensors. It stays about the same. 
meaning it is a highly parallel system. And today, a lot of the sensor technologies that people are developing uses conventional techniques that limits the amount of sensors that they can have as well as the speed that they can operate in. That's why our group came up with a very new technology that enabled the world's fastest electronic skin and we're able to operate at speeds much faster than, than human nervous systems but at the same time can scale very well to very large numbers of sensors. So another interesting aspect of the human nervous system is that you have a lot of wires, you have a lot of nerves running all over your body and this actually presents challenges to realize on artificial systems. You don't want to have that many wires, it becomes complex. And so that's why our system we call ACES or asynchronous coded electronic skin is able to transmit all the information via a single wire for machine learning algorithms to process, thereby making it very intelligent. And our work was published in Science Robotics recently, and if you're interested, uh, feel free to uh, read my papers. And I think ultimately what we are really trying to do is to create impact for people. The kind of technologies that we are developing is able to help paraplegics regain the sense of confidence and even ability to handle objects. For example, here you have a brain machine interface that's implanted on the brain to control a robotic hand. But right now, these hands still do not provide the sensation of touch. And we believe that providing this sense of touch to such systems can really empower individuals in the future. And this is uh, getting more and more important because of health conditions such as diabetes. You know, in Singapore, we have an average of four amputations a day. And when you amputate a part of your body and you lose the sensation, it becomes debilitating and we think that having electronic skins for prosthetic devices will enable people to regain the sense of confidence and, the, and their productivity. In fact, our technology is widely recognized by different international news media and we are the only Singapore team with the technology that's featured by Intel, which is a very large semiconductor company that makes almost all the chips that you may have in your computers or your smartphones. And we are the only team from Singapore to be featured on their architecture day as a very important technology for some of the newer versions of microprocessors they are developing. And so we are very proud of this achievement. And lastly, I think that if you look at where we are today, a lot of technologies you are using would appear like magic to people just 50 or even 100 years ago. And Arthur C. Clarke, which is a very famous science fiction writer, puts it very well. Magic's just signs that humans, we don't understand yet. And I like to add that I think reality is just science engineered and engineers play a very important role in creating technologies that can impact lives. And lastly, as all of you are thinking about your future, I think that the best way to create the future is to invent it. And I look forward to having a discussion with all of you. Once again, my name is Benjamin T and I run the census.air labs at the National University of Singapore. You can look up on my research at my website, uh, add me on Twitter, or send me an email. So lastly, I'd also like to thank the men and women that have been working with uh, alongside to create some of these groundbreaking technologies, and of course also the funding agencies, National University of Singapore, National Research Foundation, and many others that have kindly supported our work. 